say, Jesus, I love you. Yeah. Come on, how many you believe that we serve a great God? Amen. Hey, listen, I want you to do something for me wherever you are. I want you to think of one thing that you're grateful for today. Come on. One thing that you're grateful for today. You got it? Can we just say that? Say, God, I'm grateful for this. Go ahead. Say, God, I am grateful for this. God, thank you for this. God, thank you for the cross. Amen. I want you to, with that in mind, I want you to worship and remember that God is the anchor to your soul. Jesus is the anchor to your soul. Whatever problems, whatever you may be feeling or facing, whatever you're, you're feeling, if you're feeling anxiety, depression, in the name of Jesus, I believe that right now he is breaking chains, that right now as you are claiming hope, that right now as you are claiming just victory from this, we declare that with you. I believe that as you're claiming that, that Jesus is moving right where you're at, right in your home, right in your kitchen, right in your living room. Amen. So come on, worship with us.
Wow, wasn't that amazing um, knowing that God is always with us and we can worship at home. And so I'm so glad, family, that you have tuned in again this Sunday. There's no doubt in my mind that God wants to bless you, that God wants to do something great in your life. I want to remind you, uh, before I jump into the message, that we have this special email set up for uh, for my wife and I to be able to pray for you. Um, so when you get a chance, if you, if you know of any needs or you have a need yourself, I want you to email us at prayer at sendetolife.org, prayer at sendetolife.org, and and let us know what's going on in your life. We want to be able to dialogue with you. We want to be able to pray with you. And um, and speaking about that, I want to thank you again uh, for your generosity. Um, during these several weeks that we've been doing this, um, God has really blessed us because of you and because of your generosity. And so I want to thank you. Uh, I want you to prepare your offering and your tithe right now. You guys have been so amazing. What have we done with with your giving? Well, I want you to know that we've been able to bless some of our local healthcare workers. We've been able to bless other people who are going through a hard time. And specifically, uh, there's a couple pastor friends of mine who have just really been struggling. Um, a lot of uh, people in their churches have lost their jobs, and we've talked, and, and I've been able to bless some of them. And so, uh, family, I want to thank you because it's through your giving uh, here at Sendero that we are able to, to be able to bless other people. So thank you again on behalf of the leadership of our church. I want to thank you for your generosity. Again, you can text, if you're going to give right now, you can text the word Sendero to 77977. Sendero at 77977. You can see that at the bottom of your screen, or you can go to our Push Pay app, or you can uh, log on to our website and you can give there, or you can you can just uh, send us a check if you'd like at P.O. Box 968, P.O. Box 968 here in Moses Lake, uh, 98837. And so before you give, you know, I, I did this declaration a couple weeks ago, and I want to say it one more time. Uh, here at Sendero, we believe in prophesying over our giving. We believe that as we give, God hears us. And so uh, you'll see it on your screen, and I want you to repeat it with me. As I give today's offering, I'm believing the Lord for the healing of coronavirus. I'm also believing that God is going to supply all of my need according to his riches. I believe that in the midst of this crisis, me and my house will prosper so that I may have more than enough to give to the kingdom of God. I declare that fear, anxiety, and worry will not visit my life, but rather peace and joy in the Holy Spirit will be my portion. Family, let me pray for you as you give. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for another Sunday that we can uh, be in people's homes, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you give us the opportunity to give that you've blessed us, Lord Jesus. And, uh, and so, Lord God, we just, we just speak life and we speak prosperity, Lord, over people's finances, over their jobs, over their families as we give today into the kingdom. Thank you again for the generous giver this morning uh, and this afternoon, God. We just give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Well, listen, I'm excited to to bring this message to you, something that God has uh, really put in my heart a couple weeks ago. And and as I was praying about what to share with you today, um, the Lord reminded me, and I was sharing this with my wife this week, the Lord, the Lord reminded me of uh, the, the last series of, of, the, of, of 2019 that I preached. I don't know if, if you remember that, but it was called The Winds of Change. And, and, and I remember that during the months of November and December, I really felt like, like God wanted to bring change to our lives and change to our church. And so there was about five or six messages that I preached about change and the importance of discerning time. And, and um, I felt at that time like two, 2020 would be a big year of change for all of us. I had no idea, family, that at that time, God was preparing us for what we are facing today and that our lives and our world would be interrupted by this virus. You see, I went back to those messages and one in particular really stood out to me. Um, and it was, it was called Lost in transition, and, and, and I preached it on December 8th, if you'd like to go back and, and listen to it. But in that message, I shared that when God takes us into a season of transition, usually it comes through a tight place or a hard situation, and it is very possible to get lost in that transition. It's possible to get lost in change or lost in disappointment. It's possible to lose your faith and lose the fire of the Holy Spirit when life isn't what we thought it would be, and that makes us become cynical and very negative. I wanna to talk to you about this today because 
If there's ever a time to be tempted to become cynical and, be, and doubt and be negative, it's now. Um, I, because it's just very possible to allow disappointment to steal our faith and strip away our hope for better things and for more of God. Listen, as much as I believe that God is using this period of time to stir the church and stir up the faith of many people, I also believe that there may be some casualties, people who lose their faith and who aren't searching for God right now, people that are battling discouragement or are angry at God or angry at the government or angry at their jobs or even angry with the church, and they are distancing themselves from faith and from God altogether because it is possible to feel alone and trapped right now with what we're going through. And if you and I aren't proactive in searching through the scriptures and discerning what God is doing today, it is possible to grow cold in our faith. You see, this began to happen on the very day that Jesus resurrected from the dead. I, I want you to open your Bibles with me to the book of Luke chapter 24, and I want to read a couple of scriptures to you about a situation where people were tempted to lose faith in Jesus because they were disappointed with what, had, what was going on in, in, in that day. In Luke chapter 24, I want to read it to you. Just a couple of scriptures says this. It says, now, now that same day, Two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, watch this, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But verse 16 tells us this, but they were kept from recognizing him. In our story this, this day, Two disciples are walking back home from Jerusalem to a town or a village called Emmaus. It was a seven-mile journey to, to the west, and, and they had followed Jesus, these two particular disciples that weren't part of the 11, but it had been three days since they hadn't seen him, three days since he had died, and now they were discouraged, they were disappointed, and they felt absolutely defeated and helpless. So they, they do what most people do when they feel that way, they turn away. They go backwards. Now, now I want you to pay attention what happens in this story. As, as they are walking home, they're, they're, they're talking through the eyes of disappointment and sorrow. And they're talking about what if and, and why didn't this happen and why, why are we going through this? We gave up everything to follow him and now he's nowhere to be found. And right as they're talking and, 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 and discussing things, a man walks right behind them, but not just any man. It was the risen Savior himself, Jesus. But verse 16 tells us that they were kept from recognizing him. So interesting that Jesus did not allow them to recognize that it was he that was talking with them. You see, I used to think that it was their sadness or their disappointment that had blinded them in this moment. But as you study the scriptures a little bit more, it was God himself who did not allow them to recognize that it was Jesus next to them. And in a moment, I'm going to tell you why. And as they're talking, Jesus comes up to them and says, hey, what's up? Uh, what are you guys talking about? And, and why are you guys so sad? And they look at him and, and they, they, they look, like, look at him like if he's crazy. And they, they said, are, are you the only person visiting Jerusalem that doesn't know what just happened? I mean, are you, are you crazy? Do you, do you not realize what just happened? Are, and, and I found, family, that it's interesting um, that when we are in a tight place or a difficult spot, it feels like God isn't involved in it. And, and we feel like God isn't aware of, of the heartache that we're going through. And so Jesus, discerning everything that's going on, says, hey, what happened? Explain it to me. And they looked at him and they said, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, a mighty prophet who was crucified by the religious leaders, um, uh, they, they killed him. And then look at what verse 21 says. You'll see it on your screen they tell Jesus, now remember, they can't tell it's him, but they tell him, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. Did, did you see that? We had hoped. So they called him a prophet, 
but they didn't call him Messiah because they had hoped that he would be the one to do everything. But in their minds and in their hearts, Jesus had failed them. God had failed them. Can I tell you that the disappointment in their heart led to the confession in their mouth and blinded them from seeing the truth? I'm going to say that one more time because I think that's happening to a lot of people today. The disappointment in their heart led to the confession in their mouth. Isn't it Jesus who taught that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks? And so the disappointment in their heart led them to think that they were a failure and that Jesus had failed them and they were blinded from seeing that it was Jesus walking with them the entire time. And they said, hey, it's the third day. And, and some women even came to us this morning and told us that the tomb was empty and, and they had even seen some visions of angels talking to them, but nobody has seen him. And so it's over. Our, our, our lives are changed forever. We gave up everything and, and now... Nothing's going our way. And so we're going back home. We're going back to the way we used to be. And Jesus looks at them in the true spirit of a father. Jesus looks at them and says, Oh, foolish ones, slow of heart to believe what has been prophesied about the Messiah. And they look at him and then he begins a teaching message that is just private. It's between, it's between them three, but... But it tells us, the scripture says that he began to explain to them the writings of Moses and all of the Old Testament prophets that pointed to him as Messiah. He goes through the book of Genesis and Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy, and he takes them through the Psalms and, and through the prophet Isaiah and Micah and Daniel and Zechariah and begins to tell them how all of those writings were pointing to the suffering of the Messiah. And he showed them clearly that the Old Testament was merely a shadow of better things to come and how all of it, the entire Old Testament scripture points to Jesus, the Messiah, and that he would have to suffer. But, but listen, when you're blinded by disappointment, you can't see what Scripture tells you clearly. And you often can't hear the gentle voice of Jesus through his spirit that is inside of you. So you just tend to go deeper into that hurt and that confusion, which leads to anger. They finally, after having this great conversation with Jesus and not knowing, remember, not knowing Ah, some of you need to understand you're walking and, and you're frustrated and you think that Jesus has left you and you're blinded by that, but you need to realize that Jesus is actually right with you. They finally get home and, and Jesus, I, I, I love Jesus, he, he kind of sets things up and, and he acts like he's going to walk away to another town and they say, well, no, 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 stop, stop. We don't know who you are, but please, it's, it's late. Come stay with us. Come eat with us and, and stay the night in a room. Um, and then in the morning, you can leave. Now remember, and I need to finish, but, but remember, they still don't know, these two men, they still don't know that they're with Jesus. They're just walking home, but something inside of them was brewing, was stirring. And so they get home and, and they wash up and it's time for dinner and something amazing happens. Jesus takes the head spot at the table that was reserved for the owner of the home. But Jesus takes that place. And they sit down realizing now that, that the man that they were talking to, they still didn't know it was Jesus, but, but he carried something different. He, he was the one person in Jerusalem that didn't allow all the exterior uh, confusion get inside of him. And he was confident and he sits with them. And the Bible says that he took bread and he blessed it almost like another communion. And he blessed the bread and he breaks it and he gives it to them. And the Bible says something so interesting that when he broke the bread, now listen, you got to understand that in those days when you broke bread, it was a sign of communion and fellowship. It, it was a sign of intimacy uh, between families. And, and so Jesus sits and he breaks it. He has a time of intimate conversation with these men and, and he breaks it. And when he broke it, the Bible says that instantly their eyes were opened and they recognized that it was him. Ah, oh, it's just so interesting that they could not recognize him until they were still. They couldn't recognize him until they got out of their sadness and sat with him. 
And when he broke the bread, their eyes were opened and finally they knew that it was Jesus. And right when they looked to call him and, and say, Jesus, he was gone, raptured out of there, gone. They, they had no idea where he was, but he vanished. And I love what they say next. They look at each other. And in verse 32 of that same chapter, they say this. Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? Ah, I can imagine they're looking at each other saying, man, as he walked and he talked with us, we had no idea that it was the risen Savior. We had no idea that our Savior and our Lord was with us. We were so stuck in our disappointment. We, were, we, were, we couldn't recognize that it was him. But as he talked, our hearts burned and they were stirred, but it wasn't until we invited him into our home and sat down and stilled the craziness of our thoughts and silenced the disappointment and even the accusations of the enemy. It wasn't till we got out of all of that and focused on the one who was sitting at the table with us that we finally saw him. I'm telling you, family, that you and I might not recognize what God is doing right now, but I promise you, I promise you with, with who I am today that he's with you and he's talking with you and he's walking with you every day, whether you're at work or whether you've lost your job, whether you're teaching your children, no matter what you are doing, I promise you that he's with you. I promise you that he's talking with you. Every time you're afraid to go shopping, every time you're afraid to leave your house, I promise you that Jesus is walking with you. I promise you that he's talking to you. I promise that God is doing something amazing. I, I need to tell you something. Maybe you don't feel him. Maybe you don't, you don't want to talk to him, but he's there. He's with you. And later when we look back on this journey, will recognize that he was with us all along. Before, before, before we're done, I've asked our worship team to sing one more song that encourages us to run to Jesus in this time.
I'm telling you, we need to run to him today. We need to run to him. We, we need to silence any kind of disappointment, any kind of fear, any kind of worry, and even the what ifs. And family, if, if I can repeat what I preached several months ago, here's my word to you today. Don't get lost in this transition. Do you hear me? Don't get lost in this transition. Let your heart burn for Jesus. Maybe you've lost your job, as I said earlier. Maybe you feel lonely. Maybe you are growing cold in your faith. Maybe the Bible doesn't appeal to you. Maybe you're angry, but, but I've come to prophesy to somebody uh, that the Lord tells you it's time. It's time to stir up that faith again. It's time to encourage yourself. It's time to invite Jesus to the table so that you can have sweet fellowship and communion with him and have intimacy with his presence. I'm telling you that the moment that you will still your thoughts, I'm telling you, you'll recognize Jesus and you'll look back on this time. You see, I'm convinced that, that in a year from now, in two years, in three years, in five years, we're gonna look back on this moment and, and, and one of two things is gonna happen. We're either gonna thank God for it and we're gonna glorify him because we've seen that we've grown or we'll look back on it with regret and say, what if I would have found Jesus? What if I would have looked for him? What if I would have sat with him? What if I would have recognized him in the midst of this virus season? I'm here to, I'm here to tell you family that it's now. You got to do it now. Don't get lost in this transition. Don't get blinded by disappointment. Jesus is risen. He's with you. He's walking with you. He's talking with you. I love what happens next. These two men, the Bible says that immediately after Jesus was gone, they look at each other, they talk, and then they bounce back to Jerusalem. They run back those seven miles to Jerusalem and they go back to that room where the 11 other disciples were and they say, we saw him. We saw him, it's true, he's alive, he's appeared to us. And I'm telling you guys, we gotta have fellowship. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. And I'm telling you that as they were talking to the 11 disciples, Jesus shows up again. You see, Jesus will always show up if you invite him in. If you invite him in, and, I, and that's what I wanna pray for you. Maybe you're watching me and, and maybe this is your first time and you were tempted to log off, and but something told you to stay on here to listen. I, I want to pray with you. You need Jesus, friend. Family, you need Jesus. You need him. This is for those that have grown cold. This is for those that have turned away. And this is for those that are watching for the first time. We need him. We need to invite Jesus in. So if that's you, listen, don't wait till we come back together to do it. The Bible says it today. Today is the day of salvation. Would you pray this prayer with me? I, I want it's, it's called the prayer of faith. It's real simple, but it's a prayer acknowledging our need for Jesus. And it's an invitation for Jesus to forgive us because we've all sinned. We've all fallen into this trap of disappointment, but Jesus is still walking with us. He's still talking with us. I want you to say this prayer. I want you to say, Jesus, today I realize that I need you. I've walked away from you and I need to run back to you. Forgive me of my sin. Come to my heart and save me. Today, I make you Savior and Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend and family, if you said that prayer, I want you to know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing because Jesus has come into your heart and his spirit now lives inside of you. We don't want you to, we don't want, we don't want to leave you alone during this time. We want to walk with you. Would you mention something in the chat window right now? And just write, I got saved, or I gave my heart to Jesus. Fill out our, our, our info card on our on our website or mail us at prayer at sendetolife.org. Let us know that you surrendered to Jesus, that you've come back to him. We want to walk with you. We want to talk with you. We want to show you what it is to serve Jesus. Now for everybody else, listen, one more prayer before I let you go home. I wanna pray that God, if, if you've been blinded by disappointment, I wanna pray that God heal you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that you are healer and that you are moving and you are stirring in people's hearts and in people's lives. Father, I bless every watcher, Lord, every person that's watching me, God, whether they're in a living room, in a kitchen, outside taking a walk or taking a drive, wherever they may be, God, Lord, manifest your presence to them. 
Bless them, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Family, we love you. We are so thankful for you. We can't wait. We're one Sunday closer to coming back together. And until then, know that we are with you, heart and soul. Hey, listen, we'll see you Wednesday night. God bless you.